Acho que eu devo a mim. Eu me salvo todo o bagulho que eu estou super aqui, Maharaj. Chocadeva e Shreya Suk. Me insista. Pero eu estava chamando a Tirada. He is the parent of Shmatrat, raised by her, taken care of by her. Shmatrat was feeding, used to feed him very beautiful pomegranate seeds. And she used to say what? is indicating that Shema Tiratka she used to take very beautiful and reddish pomegranate seeds and she used to give to the baby parrot and she used to teach him you should chant the name of Krishna one day something happened the parrot, you know, very restless, came out of the like kind of cage, went flying into another gown. Where Krishna is playing with his friends. Estão falando que português está sem som no Facebook. Achut. And then. The parrot came in a branch and he was just singing the name of Krishna, Krishna, in the same voice of Shmatiratka. Because Shmatiratka taught him how to sing the names of Krishna. That's why the parrot was chanting the name of Krishna, Krishna. And then Krishna looked behind. Krishna was thinking, where Shmatiratka is here? Where has she come from? Because her voice and hearing her voice. And then Krishna saw that on the top top of the on the branches of the tree there was a parrot. Krishna held that took the par caught the parrot and he said, Hey so don't chant my name. You should chant the name of Radha. So in this meantime, Shmatiratka came. Shmatiratka came and said, Krishna, this parrot is mine, give me him. Krishna said, he is a parrot, he does not belong to you nor me. They are flying in the sky, they are free. If anyone like catches them, the, the, the birds, they belong to that person. How possible he is yours? It's yours. Shmatiratka said, no, but I took care of him. I raised him. 
I used to feed him very beautiful uh, radish pomegranate seeds. It's mine. Krishna said it's mine, and Radharani said it's mine. Like the parents. So they were quarreling, Radha and Krishna. Krishna didn't want to give her the parents. His parent is mine, mine, mine. I cannot give him. Give him. Shmatradka nomini. Complain to Mother Jashoda. Mother Jashoda came and with one hand she held Krishna and with other hand she took the parrot from the hand of Krishna, Mother Jashoda. And then Mother Jashoda gave the parrot back to Shumatira. Mother Jashoda said, Hey, Gopal, your father is sitting waiting for you to take the shot. <coughs> Without you, your father won't eat, so let's go. Go. In this way, Shumatiratka came back to Barshana with the parrot. But this parrot had been taught by Krishna. He had learned one sound. Rade, Rade, Krishna. So now the parrot started saying, Rade, Rade. Shumatiratka said, don't tell my name. Tell the name of Krishna. But the parrot is also very clever, intelligent. You know? He said there is Diksha Guru and also Shiksha Guru. Both are there, Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. If you take mother from someone, that person is a, you are Diksha Guru. If you are hearing Harikata from someone, taking some teaching from him, he is your. So if you take mantra from someone, he is a Diksha Guru. If you take teachings, he is Shiksha Guru. Shastra explains. Diksha Guru is the form of Krishna and Shiksha Guru is the Swarupa of Krishna. Actually, there is no difference between Diksha and Shiksha Guru. There is no difference between Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. If the Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru are in the same level, you should not see any difference between them. So the parrot had taken Diksha from whom? And he said, chant the name of Krishna, like chant Krishna. But Krishna gave which Diksha? The Diksha in the Radha Mantra. So now the parrot had two mantras to chant. Krishna Mantra and Radha Mantra. When you do Archan, we offer both of Krishna Mantra and Krishna Mantra. And for the Archana, we use the Radha Mantra. You can read it in the Archana Deepka. So there is Krishna Mantra, Gopal Mantra. And another point, Radha Mantra is also Radha So now the parrot got Radha Mantra and Krishna Mantra in both and there's no difference between Radha and Krishna. Radha Krishna only one. Just for pastime, they manifest of forms. So the parrot thought, better I kept, keep the word of both. Diksha Guru, like the both. So he started to sing the both names together, Radha Krishna. Actually, Hare means Shumatiradka. The original name of Shumatiradka is Hara. She steals the mind of Krishna. With her beautiful form qualities, 
She steals the mind of Krishna. That's why her name is Hara. And in Sambodan Pad, this invocation case, this is Hari. According to the Vyakaran, Sanskrit grammar, and evo, in, case, invocation case. So you're saying, hey, Shamatarani. But Krishna comes from the verbal root Kris. One who attracts all living entities towards him. All the living entities. And also, all God attracts all the living entities, uh, removes all the material things from their hearts, and gives Prem. That's why his name is Krishna. So the parents were thinking, I'll chant the name of both. Radha and Krishna. So in this way, after some days, one day, Shmatrata, she said, Hey, so go to the material world. Why? People in this world are so upset, nobody's happy. Raise your hand if you're happy. Can anyone raise your hand saying I'm happy? So there's no one in the family life. Everyone's unhappy. This material world is the shelter of the unhappiness. There's no happiness here. Everyone is unhappy in this material world. The rich person thinks, sorry, the poor person thinks that the rich is happy. The rich person thinks, oh, the person richer than me is happy. The person richer says, the king is happy. The king says, no, who is happy is an emperor. Emperor says, oh, in the king of Swarga must be happy. Inda says, no, who is happy is Brahma. Brahma himself is saying, no one is happy, come on. Even I am not happy. Who is happy? Tell me. Those who do bhajan of Bhagavan. So all of you are happy or not? Why? Because you do bhajan. Look, if you take Diksha Mantra from Guru and you do bhajan, you will feel bliss. You Feel the happiness. Those who have taken shelter of Guru and are chanting the mother, they are happy. The rest of people are all unhappy. Okay, coming to the Kata. Shmatrata <coughs> told the parrot, go to the material world. Everyone is unhappy in this world. Another name of this world is Dunya. The place of unhappiness. Because everyone is unhappy in this material world. Shmantaratka so says, go to the material world and preach about my kata. <coughs> Preach about my kata, like about us in Loka Vrindavan. If anyone hears what you speak, remembers, the person will be delivered from the all material things and will attain the boat of Lord. But the parrot said, Gurudev, I, won't, I will not go. Because no material world, material world, Maya can come and just catch it. Those even liberated persons who are in the material world, even Maya even grabs these kind of people who are liberated in the material world. Imagine what speak of others. But Shmatrata said, Parrot, I'll give you a benediction. Look, my hand is on your head, upon your head. Maya will never ever touch you. Go. You know, you have to follow the instruction of the Guru without hesitation. So, Guru Deva told, so having received the instruction of Shmati Radha, this shuk, 
as manifestações this material world. But if you come to this material world, you must take the shelter of one mother. He was born from the womb of a sheep parent, like an egg. And then, exactly what Shiva and Parvati was speaking with Bhagavad Kata. Even though I said Bhagavad Kata in the Bhagavad Kata eternal, just to teach the jivas of this world, there is a story of how he manifested the Kata, how the Kata was manifested. So the beautiful description, once, Nadarishi came to Kailash. Where did he come to? Kailash. She was not in his house. He had gone out for some reason. So Devi Parvati was very happy to see Nadarishi served him. And then he, she put him to sit on a higher position. Narada said, Oh, Devi, everything's okay? She said, Yeah, everything's great. But if you ask any person to someone, naturally you ask about the husband. How's your husband? Devi Parvati said, Oh, my husband has no like, faults. He's Nirgun. Beyond the material modes of nature, he's Bodhi Baba. He's so. Simple. If someone's husband is as like a Ravan, what to speak? But if someone has a husband like Ram, it's very nice. Which kind of husband do you want? Like a Ravan or like Ram? Like Ram, right? I'll tell you one story. In the time of the wedding ceremony, you give how many rounds around the five sacrifices? Have you gotten married? Okay, for how many times you uh, around the five sacrifices? Why? Seven times. Ah, because we'll get married for seven lives. People say like this. Oh, for seven lives, you'll be my wife, my husband. Then somebody one time asked me, Maharaj, is my first life together or my last life together with this person? I said, you can decide yourself. If we're like two pigeons always together, you know, the pigeons. Then you should understand this is your first birth together. Still have to stay together for six births. Because this is still the first. But if in this life you are like always quarreling, you understand this is your last life of the person. So in, in your case, you are in each which birth, together with the person, with her husband. He said uh, eight, not eight, only until seven. <laughs> so Devi Parvati told Nagdarishi, my husband is so simple. Then she said, she told Narada whatever I, he sh shouldn't even speak, he tells me. Parvati said that he only speaks about Krishna and Ram. It's true. Shivaji is always what? Telling Ram Kata and Krishna Kata. Shiva has how many heads? Five. That's why his name is Panchana. He has five faces. With these five faces, he is always glorifying Krishna and Ram Kata. This is true. And whatever he actually should not even speak about, he's also speaking. What Shiva shouldn't have spoken about and he did? What? Well, Shiva was so absorbed in Bhav and then he spoke something that he shouldn't have spoken about. What? About the Guru Mantra. Actually, between husband and wife, Do you understand what I said? No. Gurudev said, between husband and wife, keep all the secrets. Then he said, oh no, wait. It. You speak everything, how much money you have in the bank. Actually, speak everything between husband and wife. But one thing you have to keep a secret, even between husband and wife, the Guru Mantra. Just explain. If husband and wife took Diksha, even from the same Guru, still, husband and wife should never discuss with each other. 
ਗੁਰੂ ਮੰਤਰ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਸਿਤ ਵਿਦ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਮੈਂ ਗੁਰਦੇਵ ਸਿਤ ਗੁਰੂ ਮੰਤਰ ਕਿਉਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਮੰਤਰ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਸਿਤ ਵਿਦ ਗੁਰਦੇਵ ਬਾਤ ਪਰਸ਼ੀ ਮਾ ਸੰਤਾਂ ਸੇ ਸੋ ਅਮਰਜਾਬ ਜੀ ਮਾ that he would, he would speak even about the guru mantra with parvati so parvati was telling that you see my husband he does not hide anything from me no nothing he hides from me <coughs> even what he shouldn't tell me he also tells me now that she was hearing after hearing now that she said okay devi tell me one thing your husband Why does he have so many uh, ashes on his body? Some uh, garden of so this is his renunciation. She does not want anything. He is put in the ashes of crematorium. Now that he is like, no, look, your husband, has keep his cats like this uh, ashes skulls there actually a hidden threat a hidden truth behind this and actually the reason why he does this is the essence of all Veda Purana Upanishad but he hasn't told you yet like why he's wearing these ashes the skulls all these things now that he said look but I have to go when your husband comes you can ask him but I have to go now that they came out after two four steps he was going away shivji came hey takuji hena de shiva you coming from oh, I'm going from your house from your house yes shiva thought today certainly i will not get that even a roti or chapati for eating cuz narada she was just recently in my house certainly i will have to fast today no no food when i come back So Shiva slowly, 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 he came ne- next to his house. As soon as he stepped in the house, Devi Parvati came like the fire, furious. She was so angry. And she started saying, Oh, then she said, Oh, you, you told me sometimes that you would tell me everything, that you didn't have any secret. So why did you hide something from me? She was said what did I hide from you? What? <coughs> she was said now that she came. She said yes. Oh, this is the thing. Okay, for with some difficulty, both sat down. They were part of the ashes. Why do you put so many ashes and bones on your body? She was said hey Devi Parvati, listen to me. all tell these secrets actually because we love each other I am keeping the bones of which, uh, each of your births like a garland the ashes of your own body is that what I am putting in my own body now what does that mean? I don't understand look my name is Mithyam Jai I have conquered the death. How possible? <laughs> Those who go to find here, the Bhagavad Katha, they become Mrtunjai. They can conquer the death. Like Shivaji said, if any person hears and glorifies Bhagavad Katha, the person can defeat the death. Mrtunjai. So they will tell you have conquered the you have conquered but I have to again and again have to be born and die oh because you're not hearing Harikata then Shiva said then then Parvati said okay please tell me Bhagavad Kata Parvati asked Shiva then Shiva and Parvati both are sitting and Shiva told look Another name of Bhagavad Kata is Amar Kata. What did I say? Amar Kata. Something which, which makes you immortal. If you hear this Amar Kata, you'll become immortal. 
So for the first, so his first time that Shiva told Kata to Devi Parvati was in a place called Amarnath. <coughs> in Amarnath, Shiva told Kata to Parvati. That's why now, until nowadays, people go there to this place, Amarnath. Shiva told this Kata of Bhagata is Amar Kata. I don't tell this to unqualified people. But seeing your faith, I want to tell you Bhagavad Gita. Listen to me. But you're a woman. You'll fall asleep. But also if an unqualified person hears it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Shiva told Parvati. You have to also do home. You also should do that. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Hmm. Then I'll understand. Oh, you guys are all listening. You're hearing. Okay. Devi Parvati sat down. Shiva started to glorify the Kata. First canto, third, until fourth, fifth canto. So, fifth canto is about geography. Mathematical terms about distance and of the earth and many things. So if you don't understand something, automatically you feel some sleepiness and pain in your head. So Devi fell asleep. Devi Parvati. And at that time, Shukadeva Goswami said, exactly at that moment, I was born from the egg of a parrot, female parrot. And then my mother, the parrot, he had gone somewhere, she had gone somewhere to collect food. It was very cold, so much like uh, snow. And suddenly a strong wind came. I fell from the nest. And I fell exactly where Shiva Parvati Kata was going on. I fell on the branch of a tree right there. So I fainted. But Where's the fruit of, because of fruit of hearing Bhagavad Gita from Shivaji, I got my life here back again. I became, I resurrected. And then, <laughs> so the Vipat was doing. Huh, huh, huh. Huh. So I also start to imitate him. The Vipat part actually had fallen asleep. But I was doing who in the same voice of Devi Parvati. Then after some time, Shiva opened his eyes and he saw that Devi Parvati was like knocked out. Devi, Devi, hey, you fell asleep. Oh, yes, I fell some sleep. You're feeling so sleepy, yeah, right. Yes, sleepiness came. So who heard my kata? <coughs> Some unqualified person. She was searched here and there. He didn't find anyone. Then he found one parrot sitting there. Parrot. Shiva brought his trident. Started to run behind the parrot. Parrot. Parrot was flying, flying, and came next to the but the Kashram where Vyasadeva was sitting with his wife Bitika and discussing with her some Purana Kata. Bhagavad Kata. Okay, about the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam, he was telling her. So the parrot, flying, flying, enter inside the mouth of Bitika. Then she came and told me. Mr. Devaji, have you seen any birds? Mr. Devaji said, Hey, Mahadev, what, from, when did you become a hunter? You're hunting animals, birds. Oh, some unqualified person heard my kata. But Mr. Deva replied to Shiva. You tell me one thing. What happens if someone hears your kata? The person becomes immortal. 
He heard the Kata. Yes, so did he become immortal? Yes, so if he became immortal, how can you search and try to kill him? Shivaji thought, oh, this is true. So Shivaji came back. This Shuka, he stayed for 13 years in the womb of Mitika Samadha Vaishnava Singh. Explained that for 16 and to 16 years old, he was in the womb of his mother. One day, Vasudeva told, Oh, who is in the womb of the mother? Come out. And the parrot said, I cannot go out, because otherwise Maya will catch me. Yes, they said, I give you my word. Come out of the womb of mother, of your mother, Maya will not touch you. But then the parrot from inside the womb gave answer. He said, I don't have, I don't trust your words. If Krishna directly would manifest here and give him my word, then I could come out. Then Vasudeva started to meditate and he made Swami Bhagavan manifest there. Then Swami Bhagavan, then he told Hesuk, Come out from the womb of the mother. For how long you will stay there? Bhagavan told the parrot in the womb. womb. So if you take one sword and you throw one mustard seed on the blade of this uh, sword, for how long this mustard seed will stay like balanced and on the edge of the X? No, sorry, horn. So very quickly, he should come out of the of the womb, and Maya would not touch him. So he did like that, and then Shukadev came out of the womb of his mother. Just like a 16-year-old, young. He was very beautiful. He had long arms. The Shmad Bhagavatam is described about the beauty of Shukadev Goswami. How was Shukadev Goswami Pan? His arms would go under the knees. He had very big arms, very long arms. Also, his eyes were half shut, just like the lotus flower. And he was naked. He didn't have any kind of samskar, purificatory uh, rituals. As soon as he was born from the womb of the mother, immediately he proceeded to the jungle. So Sutta Goswami glorifies Shukadeva Goswami in this verse, Jankarapa Jantam. Shukadeva Goswami, as soon as he was born from the womb of his mother, immediately <coughs> he proceeded to the jungle. Only by seeing him, all the living entities, they were immersed in pain. This is called Mahabhagavad. Who is a Mahabhagavad? Whoever he sees manifests like has Krishna Prem. Like to whomever he looks, Krishna Prem comes in the heart of this person. And if this someone has Prem, what are the symptoms? The heart uh, melts and tears come flow from the eyes. So Mahabhagavat is someone like this, chanting holy names, absorbed. 
So, I have a question that have any kind of samskar, rituals of birth, like a first ceremony, nothing was there for him. And behind him, his father, Vyasadeva, was calling out, Oh my son, oh my son, Haputra, and running after him. But look, the trees were echoing. Kakasa. He's not your son, why are you crying for him? My Guru Dev, how he is in Uttam, Uttam Mahabhagva. This Guru Padapadma is in the heart of all the living entities. So one thing is Chaita Guru, another is Diksha Guru, another. Today is Ekadasi, that's why I'm going so late. Let me see. Okay, I'll finish now. <laughs> Everybody, please take Prashad now. Today is Ekadasi. Take the fruits, Palahar. I'll just finish the Kata. Shukadev Goswami is not an ordinary person. He was running towards the forest. Actually, Shukadev Goswami told his own life history to Parikit Maharaj. Hey Maharaj Parikit, Parinishito Brahmani Goswami. Before I was, I wanted to merge in Brahma. Before I went, I wanted to merge in Brahma, but then my father Vyasadev only told me two shlokas and because of these two shlokas I give up the meditation in Brahma and I came to my father and heard Bhagavad Kata from my father and this Bhagavad Kata I heard from my father is what now I'm telling you, presenting to you so this Bhagavad Kata is eternal who told first this Bhagavad Kata Narayana himself manifested this in the heart of Brahma, all the tattoos. So Brahma then told this kata to Narada Rishi. Narada Rishi told Vyasadev, Vyasadev Ji, so told this Bhagavad Kata to his son, Shukadeva Goswami. And Shukadeva Goswami Pad is saying, Hey Maharaj Parikit, this kata I am presenting to you now.